I'm calling it right now. This video is going to be my favorite one that I make each month. Hi guys! My name is Macy and I'm a full-time reseller. On this channel, I put out reseller content to help you succeed at your reselling business. And today, we have the monthly wrap-up video! Yay! I'm trying to get you guys excited because I'm very excited about this. What is the monthly wrap-up, you might ask? I go over all of my data from the past month, break down everything you would need to know about what brands sold best for me last month, how many days did it take to sell stuff, which sites did I sell the most stuff on, what styles sold the best for me that month. It's going to be my opportunity to completely nerd out about all the data I have around reselling and my numbers regarding my reselling business and i just want to share it all with you guys all right so we're looking at the month of august and i'm going to start with my total sales which were da -da -da -da, five thousand seven hundred and ninety nine dollars 24 cents breaking it down by site you have poshmark which I made $2,828. eBay, I made $1,761. Mercari, I made $1,021. And Depop, $188. So comparing that to July, I am down a little bit. In July, my total sales were $6,027. So only a, a few hundred dollars difference, but staying fairly consistent. And same goes for the per site breakdown. They're all fairly consistent after site fees, shipping, and my cost of goods. For the month of August was $3,142. And then breaking it down further, my highest site was Poshmark, which I made $1,680. eBay, second place with 834. Mercari in third place with 536. And Depop in last place with $90. You'll sense a theme here. Poshmark is always my highest selling platform. I often list items on Poshmark first before anything else and then I cross post it to the other sites. I like Poshmark the most. I make a lot of bundle sales on Poshmark. All these factors combined make Poshmark my highest platform. Okay, now number of sales. For the month of August, I had 347 sales. On Poshmark, I had 187 sales. On eBay, I had 92 sales. On Mercari, I had 55 sales. And on Depop, I had 13 sales. My sales were slightly higher from July, but it did not result in more profit. Overall, my average sales price per item was $16.71. Breaking it down, on Poshmark, I had a $15 average sale price. On eBay, it was $19. On Mercari, it was $18. And on Depop, it was $14. The reason it is higher on eBay and Mercari is because I offer free shipping on those two platforms. So this next breakdown of average profit per sale will be a better reflection of what site is actually bringing in the most money per item. My average profit per sale was $9.06. Breaking it down, that's about $9 for Poshmark per item, about $9 for eBay per item, $9.75 for Mercari per item, and about $7 for Depop per item. So you can see it's pretty consistent across the three sites. I make about the same amount per item on every site that I sell on. I do charge different amounts depending on the site. I start off with the Poshmark price, so if the item is going to be listed for $15 on Poshmark, then my spreadsheet says on eBay, if it weighs between this weight and this weight, you should put this much as the selling price. And then that accounts for any shipping charges that I'm going to incur. And then it ends up being about the same profit for me after fees and shipping as it would be if I sold the item on Poshmark. So Poshmark is my baseline, and then I calculate it out for the other platforms to figure out what my selling price needs to be for that platform. And I can put up a little like screenshot of my pricing structure here so that you can get a better visual of what I'm talking about. It's kind of involved because <laughs> I also include how much I should put for the best offer price as an accept price, how much I should put as the decline price, and then it has it for like every single price 
that you could think of, but it helps whenever it comes time to list something and I don't really have to think about what the price needs to be for a different platform because I can just look at this little spreadsheet and go across, you know? Okay, moving on. My average days listed was 93 days and my median days listed was 58 days. This is higher from the month of July, which is bad. <laughs> you generally want to keep a fairly low average days listed or median days listed. It's because I did not list that many items in the month of August and therefore people had to buy things from my older listed items. If I had listed a lot in August, they would have had more options to buy newly listed items. So breaking down my items listed, I had listed 225 items in the month of August and almost all of those items get cross-listed to both eBay and Mercari. This is down from July, which I had listed 288 items. 225 items for August works out to about seven items a day. My goal for September is to list more than I did in July. Try to get to at least over 300. One more interesting breakdown for you guys. My total in the month of August was $3,142, but there's a few other fees that I have monthly that I should account for. I have a VA that I hired through Fiverr who shares my Poshmark closet every single day, multiple times a day. Super helpful, super important if you're going to sell on Poshmark to share your items every single day. Whenever my items don't get shared, they don't get any likes, and I don't make sales. I pay him $42 a month, so you can see it accounted for there. The next item is Upwork charge of $257.50. This is my second VA that I have for listing. I send her the photos of the items. I put in a few details for her in Vendu, and then she goes in and completes the listing for me. And then after she's done, I go in and I check the listing and I post the listing to Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. So I pay her, depending on how much work she does, in this month she did $257 worth of work, so that that is that charge. And the last item, monthly charge, is for Vendu, which is a cross-listing service, and that costs $55 because I pay for the 600 item plan so I get 600 potential listings a month. I also pay for the add-on feature relist and delist, which means whenever an item sells, I delist it from the other platforms that I had it listed on. So after all of those additional monthly costs, I made $2,788 this month, which if you break it down over the working days in August, I made $132.70 a day, which works out to about $16.60 an hour if you have an average eight hour workday. Okay, let's move it along to some statistics. Let's talk most sold brands. I'm gonna tell you my top 10 most sold brands for the month of August. It's actually top 13 because there was a multi-way tie for 10th place. <laughs> so I figured I would just read them off, you know? American Eagle, 23 items. Loft, 14 items. Banana Republic, nine items. J. Crew, seven items. Forever 21, seven items. Pink, Victoria's Secret, six items. Urban Outfitters, six items. H&M, six items. Ann Taylor, five items. Zara, five items. Old Navy, five items. Hollister, five items. And Express five items. Let's break it down by platform. For Poshmark, my most sold brand was American Eagle, followed up closely by Loft, and then a little bit further down you have Banana Republic, Pink Victoria Secret, J. Crew, Express, and Old Navy. On eBay, my most sold brand by a long shot was American Eagle followed by a multi-way tie for second place of Forever 21, Lucky Brand, H&M, Loft, Ann Taylor, Nike, Banana Republic, and J. Crew. Lastly, on Mercari, my most sold brand was Zara and Forever 21 with two items each. <laughs> Don't sell that much on Mercari. Which brands bring in the most money? per item. Let's talk about my most profitable brands. Overland 
This was a pickup at the bins. It was a men's coat. I had never heard of this brand. Apparently it retails for like crazy amounts of money, hundreds of dollars. This coat kind of had some weird discoloration going on with it. I had never sold it before. I didn't know how much it would go for. I sat on it for quite a long time, but then it ended up selling for a decent price and it made my most profitable brands list at number one. So I made $49 in profit on that brand. The next brand was Woolrich, which sold an average of $43 per item. Woolrich has some great sweaters and that's normally what I find and what I sell. Next was Rock Revival, $37 per item. Keep on the lookout for their jeans. Next was Madewell with $30 per item. I sold their jeans and tops. Next is Kayona. This is a plus size brand. This was my first time finding it and it was a really pretty wrap dress. It did very well, uh, $24 per item. Next was Lululemon, $24 per item. Uh, Peter Millar, men's brand, $23 per item. Halogen, uh, Nordstrom brand, is $23 per item. Hill Crow and the Letterpress. This is an anthropology jeans and pants brand, $23 per item, and Hudson jeans brand, $20 per item. My top five categories for the month of August. Bottoms, I made $1,043 in the category of bottoms, with jeans being the number one in that category, pants at a close second, and shorts a little further down. Next is dresses with mini and mini <laughs> being in a tie and sleeveless following it up. The dresses category might be a little bit skewed because I sometimes list the style as all sorts of things. Next was shoes, $202, with flats, boots, and heels being the top three styles there. And next was tops at $200, long sleeve tops were doing well, blouses and tanks. And lastly was men's at $180 with men's pants, men's coats, and Ben's sweaters doing well for me. To wrap this video up, I want to talk about what you should look out for in terms of styles for the month of September. These are the things that if you find them, you list them immediately, and if you already have them, get them listed now. Sweaters, specifically, keep your eyes out for oversized sweaters, colorful sweaters, fall-inspired sweaters, whether that means that there is fall embroidery on them or they are a fall color palette, any sort of grandpa sweater, which is if you're looking through the men's sweater and you find a vintage sweater that has a nice pattern to it or has some sort of cable knitting, something going on that you might have seen in your grandpa's closet at some point or your dad's closet, go ahead and scoop that sweater up and sell it in the women's category as an oversized grandpa sweater. If you can model it, that's even better. Show off that sweater, make it look cute, and it should sell fast anywhere between $20 and $60. Next is jeans. Keep your eyes out for mom jeans, dad jeans, and high-rise jeans. Dad jeans are kind of like mom jeans, except they are even boxier and more oversized. <laughs> So if you find a pair of jeans that you think might be for men, maybe see if they can be worn by a woman instead. <laughs> this seems to be a theme, right? Let's look in the men's section and see what we can throw on a female. <laughs> Keep your eyes out for some boots, riding boots and booties. Specifically, if you have them, definitely get them listed. Any sort of brown cognac, cognac? Cognac. These are fall staples. People are looking for them right now. Taupe. 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 Taupe is apparently a pretty popular color. I don't know how to say any of these colors. <laughs> I need to figure out how to say colors apparently. But just think about what people are going to be needing for going around outside in the fall. Also keep an eye out for active wear. Uh, think about kids going back to school, kids going back to college. What are they gonna be wearing? Probably a lot of leggings, a lot of hoodies, sweatpants. Think comfy clothes. Some kids aren't going back to school. They're just gonna be lounging around their house. They still want some comfy clothes to lounge around in. A few styles to look out for. You wanna be looking for some statement sleeves. So ruffles or structured sleeves, puff sleeves, um, balloon sleeves, anything that has a lot going on in this area. It's a good thing. You wanna be also looking for statement collars. 
so like frilly Victorian style collars, pointy collars, like the 70s pointy collars, bonus points if the cuffs of the shirt match the collar. Want to be looking for midi dresses, so long sleeve dresses that also have some sort of rib knit material. Bodycon styles are great. So the long dresses that look like they're made for fall. You want to look out for fringe. So at the hem of a dress or a coat or a sweater, if you see fringing or if you see classic like tiered fringing either on a dress or on a top. And lastly, keep your eyes out for leather, whether that's leather coats, leather dresses, or leather pants, specifically wide leg pants or culottes. And that's all I have for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I appreciate every single person that subscribes. And if you have any more style tips about what to look out for in the fall, be sure to leave those comments down below. I hope everybody has a great day. Bye!